Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source. A leaked report by the CDC says the war has changed. Even though Americans are dying and being hospitalized with COVID at very low rates, NTD's Miguel Moreno has the details. The CDC's leaked report was published by the Washington Post. In it, the agency says the Delta variant is as contagious as chickenpox, likely to be more severe than the ancestral strain and may be equally contagious among vaccinated and unvaccinated people. To back up some of their points, they used foreign unreviewed studies from countries like Singapore. To conclude, they said the war has changed, also saying they'll reconsider other community mitigation strategies. Could this mean lockdowns? On Thursday, the White House said it's open to the idea if the CDC recommends it. A day later, we got a different response. So our goal is to make sure that we are not headed towards that. That is not going to be uh, the, 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 the direction that we take because we have the tools to prevent that. Fact is, cases are surging, but people are being hospitalized and dying of COVID at a rate so low we haven't seen since March 2020. The CDC report also cites data from Scotland, Canada and Israel, all showing that two Pfizer doses were still extremely effective at keeping people from dying or being hospitalized with the Delta variant. Governor Ron DeSantis already said it. He's not locking down. Uh, there's a movement to try to um, impose more restrictions on the American people. And I just want to say in Florida, uh, there will be no lockdowns. There will be no school closures. There will be no restrictions and no mandates in the state of Florida. The CDC hasn't gotten back to us, and they haven't verified the report or published it. So much of what's contained is still in question. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. The new prime minister of Samoa has confirmed she will cancel a China-backed port project. But she hasn't closed the door to China. All this against a backdrop of intensifying regional competition between Beijing and Washington. Jason Albano reports. Under new leadership, the island nation of Samoa is trading more cautiously as China and the U.S. look to secure power in the Pacific waters. Its newest prime minister, Fiamin Naomi Mata'afa, reversed a promise the old government made to build a new port on China's dime to the tune of $100 million. Mata'afa called the project excessive for a nation already heavily indebted to Beijing. She indicated she would only approve investments that had clear benefits for Samoa. There seems to be a renewed interest um, in the Pacific, which may be a good thing, but not necessarily. We do have a very broad um, scope of partners uh, for development. So for us, it's a, it's a matter of prioritizing and having a review and then engaging us in where, you know, we could work successfully um, with each partner. Though this stretch of the Pacific has been largely uncontested since World War II, the country of 200,000 people has found itself exposed to a geopolitical tug of war between Washington and its allies and a more assertive Beijing. But China remains Samoa's single largest creditor. Its debts to Beijing worth $160 million account for 40 percent of its external debts. Mata'afa, however, has said her government will assess its relationship with China in the same way it evaluates all of its bilateral relations. The Chinese military may be closer than you think. A group of photos shows China's paramilitary training Cuban special forces just outside Havana. ADN Cuba, a new Spanish language media, recently obtained this set of photos. In black, the Cuban regime's special forces, also known as the Black Berets. And in green, the Chinese regime's People's Armed Police, a branch of the Chinese military. NTD Talking Points host David Zhang interviewed an ADN journalist and an exiled Cuban author to find out more. 
they have been chairing private groups like the same organization that has been sanctioned recently by, by the administration. And the photos is, began circulating around uh, February, which is exactly around the same time that the Cuban state press published a story about how the Chinese military was modernizing. According to the press release from the U.S. Treasury Department, the Cuban regime deployed the Black Berets to suppress and attack demonstrators during Cuba's recent anti-communist protests. The Treasury Department sanctioned the Black Berets for its human rights abuses. Maybe for around a year, the Cuban regime itself it was uh, telling the, the Cuban people that they were expecting uh, an uprising, un estallido social in, 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 its, in Spanish. So it seems to us that it's pretty clear that they, they, they said it themselves, that they were expecting this and they have been training for a long time, perhaps, into how to control these uprisings. China's armed police also specializes in so-called social stability missions. During the Hong Kong protests in 2019, Beijing is believed to have sent the People's Armed Police to suppress protesters. Several diplomats told Reuters that there were as many as 4,000 of them in Hong Kong. Some of the things which, which I think parallel Hong Kong is the fact that the Black Berets at first were not used during the day. They were used at night. Uh, they didn't confront the, the massive demonstrations. They, they identified protesters and then they did house by house searches and raids to pull them from their homes and arrest them. ADN could not confirm when the photos in Cuba were taken, but they did learn the location. This happened 25 kilometers east of Havana in, in a headquarters called Punto Cero, Point Zero. This is um, a place that has been known by training paramilitary forces that have been deployed into Latin America in the past. Frajela says the Cuban Black Berets were active in repressing dissidents and activists, even before the recent protests. She calls on the U.S. to pay attention, because all this is happening only 90 miles from our shores. Today on Capitol Hill, a bipartisan plea to the Biden administration to get illegal immigration under control, especially now as the U.S. battles rising cases of the CCP virus. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham stood alongside Texas Democrat Congressman Henry Cuellar. They are calling for Biden to appoint a border czar to tackle the surge. The Texas Democrat says his community is facing unprecedented challenges due to the illegal immigration surge. NTD's Melina Weiskup has the details. The two lawmakers are urging Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas to do more to support border agents and communities facing the brunt of the illegal immigration surge. Texas Democrat Henry Cuellar represents border city Loretto. He says the administration doesn't have to take his word for it, but instead listen to the pleas of the communities. People are just walking through. You heard from um, some of the school officials say, hey, what about our schools? And there have been lockdowns in schools. Uh, because they're right at the border and people start just coming through and they worried about their kids. So the surge has forced Catholic charities and other nonprofits to shut down. And more than 80 patrol agents in the Rio Grande and Loreto sectors have contracted the CCP virus. Over 200 hospital beds are occupied in the area. And Loreto's mayor is concerned that citizens will have to compete with undocumented immigrants for hospital space. The mayor filed a lawsuit to block the influx of immigrants into their city. Let's put rational policies on the table very quickly. It's not rational that I can't go to Canada because it may hurt the United States COVID problem and completely ignore a border that's on fire when it comes to COVID. And I've asked the secretary, why are the legal visa holders a health issue, but the undocumented uh, not a health issue? They agree that what's needed is a new pair of eyes to tackle the immigration crisis. They want President Biden to appoint a border czar, namely former Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, who served in the Obama administration. Graham says most Republicans respect Jay and solutions would come quickly if he took up the task. And he was compassionate, but he followed the law. Both Cuellar and Graham support DACA and a strong border security as well. 
And right now, Democrats are trying to include immigration reforms such as DACA and other pathways to citizenship in their $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill. President Biden says he does support this. However, ultimately, the decision is up to the Senate parliamentarian, who's an advisor overseeing Senate rules. So while Biden and many Democrats are pushing to include immigration reform in the budget bill, it's unclear whether or not it can actually be done. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NTD News. Critical race theory is a hot topic, but it may not be easy to understand. That's why the group Heritage Action for America hosted a discussion in Georgetown, Delaware. The speakers included an employment lawyer and a woman who grew up in Maoist China. NTD's Kevin Hogan has more. Join us here this evening. Speakers discussed how to stop critical race theory from dividing families and the nation. I do have compassion for others who Stephanie want to Holmes speak is the founder of a consulting firm and an employment lawyer. She says there are lawful ways to achieve diversity and inclusion in the workplace, though she points to certain training that employees are encouraged to attend, including discussion of white fragility, white guilt, and systemic racism. She says employers who use these types of training may not be considering the risk that they're breaking the law. But here, you know, if employers are consistently requiring employees to participate in this type of training or have these conversations um, where their racial group is being portrayed negatively, that could constitute a hostile work environment claim. Another speaker, Shi Van Fleet, grew up in China. She was in school during the Cultural Revolution, and when she finished school, the CCP forced her to work in the countryside and the fields for three years. She says being in America now feels like being back in China's Cultural Revolution. It's the same tactic. It's Marxist tactic. So uh, what they do is like uh, create chaos, like um, um, uh, Mao said, 天下大乱, 天下大治. They want to create the chaos so that they overthrow the existing system. The host mentioned a bill that Heritage Action supports. It's called the Stop CRT Act. Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas introduced it earlier. The bill would implement President Trump's executive order banning federal agencies and contractors from using critical race theory training. According to Heritage Action, CRT is a descendant of critical theory, which came from the Frankfurt School and is built upon Karl Marx's ideas. The Institute says a way to stop critical race theory in your school is to call federal legislators and ask them to support another bill, the Combating Racist Teaching in Schools Act. Kevin Hogan, NTD News. A Mexican zoo is celebrating its latest addition, a baby hippopotamus. At approximately one month old, this baby hippo is reportedly in good health and currently weighs about 110 pounds. His doting mother, Tammy, is never too far from her offspring. Zookeepers are still not sure if the calf is a male or female. Hippos have been identified as a vulnerable species, with populations in Africa decreasing due to poaching for their ivory teeth and a lack of access to fresh water. Hippos are the third largest land animal by weight, and a fully grown adult can weigh up to three tons. Navigating a world of economic madness, you need to have the right guide. What do today's decisions mean for your tomorrow? We ask why, what's the alternative? Uncover the deeper reasons and the hidden influences and highlight the real opportunities for profit. At Entity Business, we connect the dots for you. Good evening, thanks for joining us.